What's going on there guys? Good evening. It's the Earthmaster here on the live stream with an update video on this Wednesday night, um, June 15th, 2022 date, about 6.32 p.m. California time. The latest quake shows a 3.1 here around the area of the Indonesia area, it looks like. Indonesia Island showing some movement. Uh, we did see a little activity ramp up today along the Mariana Trench with a 5.1. Let's go ahead and check out the latest activity here. Uh, around the mo uh, around the globe here, or the flat scale map. Let's see what's going on here. There's that 5.1 over here, uh, just off the uh, towards the north of the northern Mariana Islands area. This one actually it looks like it's a 5.0 here from the USGS, 5.1 from the EMSC model. If you take a look though, still at this map, uh, aside from the activity that we've seen off the coast of Oregon, and also a swarming. Um, a little earthquake swarm i shouldn't say little this is actually a pretty sufficient uh swarm going on here off the coast of iran getting quite a few fours and fives in the mix here as well uh, this could be brewing to something much larger uh, it is off the plate boundary here a little bit uh, looking at historical data in this region does show quite a bit of earthquake activity uh, all those circles there on the map indicating some movement and uh some of those earthquakes up there around the 6.0 to 7.0 range as well uh, specifically where the swarms taking place so i'm not not really seeing anything within the vicinity um, maybe off to the uh, west a little bit uh, a few miles but specifically here at this region where the swarms kicking up not uh, not seeing any historical data there so kind of watching it obviously swarms could be um, a, a little telltale sign of um, something bigger coming within the vicinity uh it could it could be seen a swarm here and have a major earthquake up here but uh, it's good to watch this area pretty closely with this ongoing swarm same thing for the cascadia uh we haven't seen anything kick up uh let's see here the last earthquake uh, was earlier this afternoon at 1401 utc time it is now uh 0135 on the next utc day so a little bit of time has passed since we've seen any movement at least 4.0 and above here in this region i have been watching the petrolia station down here in northern california uh sometimes it'll pick up the earthquakes up here and i've noticed a couple uh distant earthquakes on that seismograph station i was watching it earlier so i think there's been a little bit more activity uh than what's noted here on the map but uh, uh, again, like I say, looking at this scale, um, it's, it's about the same as this morning. Uh, it's kind of uh, kind of eerie. Looking at the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, seeing uh, 4.9 within the last hour. Uh, and some activity over here around the Puerto Rico region. Looks like a couple microquakes and some twos and threes in the area. Go ahead and cover the west coast uh let's start up here real quick up in the gulf of alaska starting to see a little swarm in this area once again a couple twos kicking off here into the fault system up here uh the foothills fault it looks like this area does see uh, quite a bit of uh, earthquake activity in general uh, but uh, just noticing a little bit of swarming going on there pacific northwest looks relatively quiet uh, aside from a couple small earthquakes, um, it looks like right around the Mount St. Helens area. It looks like they're re reporting a couple very small microquakes. We'll check out the seismograph stations there in just a little bit. As uh, far as the swarm goes, looks like we got a total tally of eight earthquakes uh, from the USGS. The biggest one so far, 5.6. Now it is in that area where we've seen some uh, earthquake swarming activity back in early uh, December of last year. Kind of kicked off a good 30 or 40 earthquakes within this region so uh, uh these swarms they come and go but i think it you know anyone with uh well that has got knowledge of what sits over here to the east of this swarm uh, would definitely be on guard and um you know a little bit concerned about potentially seeing uh, a triggering of the cascadia so we're still kind of watching it we're keeping a close eye on it one earthquake here, 1.8 earlier this afternoon as well. In the Petrolia, California station, or uh, Petrolia area, which sits over here 
just uh, about 20, uh, 20 kilometers or so south of Eureka. Uh, movement into California, still seeing some activity around the Bay Area, although most of the movement within the last hour or so uh, confined over here around Tonopah, Nevada, and some activity down in the Ridgecrest region. Uh, not for sure what they're doing here in the Garlock Fault. I hope they're not trying to activate that. Uh, right, 1.1 Query Blast kicking off there. Uh, right smack dab within the Garlock Fault Zone. I wouldn't be blowing stuff up there. I might trigger the big one out there. That would not be good. Imagine that. That would be crazy. Uh, nothing going on here in Southern California aside from some uh, typical uh, microquake movement along the San Jacinto Fault Zone and no major activity around the Salton Sea area to note uh, at the moment. Inland movement through the Great Basin area, pretty limited here to western Nevada. Uh, not a whole lot going on up here in Yellowstone. We got, uh, looks like a 2.5 near Kelly, Wyoming, and one recorded earthquake up here around the Mammoth area. Let's go ahead and see what we got uh, for the seismograph stations here at Yellowstone National Park. I'm sure they're trying to dry out after the unprecedented rainfall amounts there a couple days ago uh, earthquake activity not a whole lot going on there folks it looks pretty uh, looks pretty quiet there's the 5.6 that struck off off uh, on the Blanco fracture zone there west of the uh, Cascadia subduction zone showing that little signature uh, earlier this morning uh, aside from that no major swarms going on here at Yellowstone National Park um, and hardly any any microquake activity to note on today's charts uh, looking over here to the east um, south southern plains area texas getting in on some movement around snyder snyder texas a couple twos and some fives out there in the uh beautiful state of texas what do we got out there though holy smokes look at that <laughs> goodness did you guys can you guys see that i don't think you have to be 10 miles up in space to see this but uh wow holy smokes man goodness okay so if you guys don't know what these are these uh, little checkered boxes out here they're not beautiful farmhouses these are uh, uh oil operations pumping operations injection wells and whatnot uh, and there's a quite there's quite a few of them i don't even know if you, if you could fit any more in here must be a very dense hot spot of uh of some some uh, resources out there under the ground either way a little bit of activity earthquake activity within this region uh, a lot of these look fairly new uh sometimes it's kind of hard to tell from these google images but uh yeah three earthquakes largest one a 3.0 in the oil fields out there in texas outside of snyder uh, let's see, New Madrid Zone, one earthquake this morning. We haven't seen any further activity in this area of the New Madrid Zone. Eastern part of the country clear uh, as well. Hawaii has been rocking and rolling a little bit today. Um, most of the movement here around the Pahala, southeastern region of the Big Island. A little activity up here around the Kilauea Volcano as well. Uh, no major changes to note at any of the volcanoes currently. Uh, we'll check the hazard notification system here from the USGS. And uh, as we can see there on the HVO update, this uh, article put out, or the uh, daily update put out <coughs> earlier today, uh, some eruption of Kilauea volcano within the crater uh, it continues. All recent lava activity has been confined to the crater. This has been an ongoing thing. Uh, current data indicate that this scenario is likely to continue. So it's been ongoing for quite a while. Same, same statement. Uh, no major changes um, have been noted here. No unusual activity at the East Rift Zone. Uh, looks like uh, uh, SO2 emissions and whatnot are below detection limits. So let's go back here to the uh, USGS map. And, um, yeah, so, you know, a little bit of activity, but still, it's just, we're kind of at a standstill. We're getting a lot of movement, though. If you look up here in Alaska, within the last hour, not only here in the Gulf, but also up here in North Alaska, uh, things kind of popping up there a little bit, 2.8. But I think we're kind of stuck here. Uh, stuck in terms of, uh, 
Well, there's not a whole lot of uh, earthquake activity going on here along the western portion of the Pacific Plate, and uh, that kind of that kind of backbuilds here. I mean, obviously we're building pressure, right? But uh, not a whole lot of release of activity. So stuff is building, uh, but also at the same time we're getting a lot of backbuilding pressure and, and earthquake activity along the North American Plate Pacific Plate boundary. Uh, so. Uh, it's, it's hard to say exactly what's going to happen next, but either way, uh, just be prepared. Trimmer map tonight. Uh, we'll go ahead and check this out here real quick. Little little bit of uptick here. Look at that. So we got trimmer, which uh, 118 epicenters of trimmer, and it's kind of within this area of the Blanco fracture zone. You see this? You guys see that? So I kind of explained earlier in my update video. Um, the way these plates work, you get movement here from the uh, from this area. This would be the Pacific plate over here, kind of moving th the direction of the plate here. It would be moving off to the northwest, while the Blanco fracture zone, this little area right here, going down to the southeast, and that would ultimately. And I kind of mentioned that this morning that we should be seeing pressure building up here along the Cascadia. So um, I think that's obviously true with the trimmer activity. We don't see trimmer movement um, from lack of activity. We see trimmer activity uh, with increased movement, increased pressure here along the Cascadia. So this kind of goes hand in hand with what I was trying to say this morning. Uh, pressure definitely increasing here on the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone, ultimately, ultimately adding some further trimmer um, down dip downstream in this area. 118 epicenters to be exact. Let's check out Mount St. Helens Regional uh, Seismogram Viewer. I am burned out, folks. Um, I don't know if I told everyone, but I I'm, I'm started uh, summer classes here in Northern California College. i uh, be taking up fall as well. So I'm, uh, I'm packed with homework, doing a lot of online classes and whatnot. And um, uh, I tell you what, it's, uh, it definitely keeps me busy getting into some uh, geology and archaeology classes right now and um anthropology a uh, whole bunch of I'm, I'm taking three distinct classes right now and it's it's a lot a lot on my plate but it's going to help me out here in the future uh, as my career goals uh, advance uh, earthquake activity we're looking at uh quite a bit here within the last couple hours see all these spikes on the map on the graph here that's earthquake activity there at uh, mount st helens let me check and see what the USGS stated here for earthquake uh, movement and also the timestamps of these earthquakes. <clears throat> uh, most recent shows a 0.6 at 1827 UTC time. So 1827 is going to be on the previous day UTC time. Stand by for a second. Um, 1827, well that's 1820, see I don't get that, <clears throat> these guys are showing 1827 for a 06.6 point, point magnitude earthquake, it's not this one because this is prior to the 1820 time frame, you guys see that, so um, Either someone read that wrong, or maybe they're showing the 1827 as uh, who knows what. Maybe one of these other little smaller ones. But either way, there's definitely earthquake activity still over the last 24 hours. This here is the uh, 5.6 that struck out there in the Blanco fracture zone, um, showing up earlier this morning at the timestamp of 11:56 UTC time. We've seen that 11:56 would be roughly about here. Uh, after the 11:20 mark, so that's the 5.6. It looks a lot larger than that, than a 5.6 mag magnitude earthquake. But uh, and a couple other ones in there as well. Some of those fours are being picked up on the Mount St. Helens station. So it's definitely properly tuned, far as the readings go here, and uh, obviously still showing some activity there at Mount St. Helens, uh, which has just been kind of active in terms of microquake activity. And I, I believe the continual subsidence of the caldera there. <clears throat> All right, space weather. 
Looking at things turning back a little bit more mellow tonight uh, in terms of the KP index. We're down to about 2. Aurora forecast looks pretty bleak and minimal currently. Uh, next couple nights don't look super hot in terms of uh, any major events coming our way, but always it's subject to change and the sun could uh, make me eat my words. So I, who knows? 30-30, 30-32, 30-33, all these sunspots here gaining some strength. 30-34 uh, will be rotating directly in the view here on the center part of the sun. Some further sunspot development behind here. Uh, I think the best chance we got here, 30-31, mixing the end down here. And uh, possibly 30-30, uh, looking at the solar weather potential. Uh, solar flare threat, 80% uh, chance of sea flare. Uh, looks like they dropped this a little bit here. M flare at 25% chance. I think there's a little bit more possibility than that, guys. 10% uh, chance of an X flare. And these probability details are forecasted here in this uh, little uh, chart here. Looks like they're stating 30, 31, 30, 32, 30, 33. Pretty much the same ones that I went over in terms of having the best likelihood of popping off a little solar flare or two. But then again, things can change, right? We can uh, we can see stuff really ramp up without uh, even a warning or even a forecast. Uh, right now, solar flare activity on the decline, but don't let that fool you. Things can change again in the blink of an eye, as we all know. Uh, let's see what we got. Current space weather conditions looks pretty minimal. Uh, there's still a little heightened speed there from the... Uh, I'm sure that's some of the remnants of the um, coronal hole activity density pretty low and the BTBZ looks pretty uh, even there in terms of the magnetic field all right guys I'm gonna jump off here hope everyone has a good night please stay safe out there and uh, of course we will chat you guys another time and of course if anything happens we will be here to try and update it uh, update the channel here ASAP um, and um, just kind of you know a little scenario here look look at all these earthquakes down here in the New Zealand area you guys see that I don't believe I really don't believe the USGS showed that I mean let me double check here and see looks like we got one earthquake what's going on there the USGS they're just showing the 4.5 uh, from earlier this afternoon but obviously on the earthquake 3d globe we got quite a bit so let's check out the EMSC model sometimes I forget to check it there's definitely seen a couple fours here uh, on the uh, north of the North Island area showing up pretty nicely. Looking at a little bit more detailed map here, seeing uh, looks like some fours in the mix right around the North Island area. A couple threes in there as well. There's a good cluster of earthquake activity here around the uh, southern portion of the Philippine plate uh, right here. And then uh, some movement down into the uh, areas of the Indonesia Islands. Quite a few threes kicking up there. So even though the USGS is showing, uh, well, you know, not a whole lot of activity on the map. Um, it's, I guess it's still kind of there in terms of microquake activity and the smaller quakes. So definitely good to run the, uh, the um, combined sources, the source feed here for the globe. Definitely gives us a... Uh, a better perspective of all the earthquakes that are taking place. Alright guys, have a good night. Stay safe out there. And again, we'll chat you guys a little bit later. Peace out.